In this one, I'll be assembling my new belt and disc sander from the plans that are available on my website. And if you're interested in building one of these for yourself, there's a link in the description that'll take you directly to the plan sales page. The first thing I did was I printed off all of the plans and I've already cut out all of the parts. There are a few sub assemblies that I need to put together before I can start on the main assembly. And here I'm putting together the main upright. This is three layers of plywood that are glued together and I'm using pins to keep the parts in line while I clamp it. Next, I can put the wheels together in exactly the same way. And then the upper wheel bracket, which is also three layers of plywood. And now I can begin main assembly. And the first step is to slide the divider onto the motor and install the two inch pulley. Since I really don't want this pulley to come loose, I'm using polyurethane construction adhesive on the motor shaft and also on the set screw to lock it in place. In the meantime, the glue is set on the plywood parts I put together earlier. And here I'm reaming out the holes that were drilled through all three layers just to make sure that they're clean and they line up correctly before installing the T-nuts. The pulley I put on the motor shaft has really only one purpose and that's to mount the lower wheel on. And to make sure that it doesn't wobble, I need to true the face. And to do that, I've set up a quick jig here to hold the motor so that I can work on the pulley. And it's a good opportunity for me to use my new wooden strap clamp to lock the motor in position while I turn the face of the pulley. To mount the lower wheel on the pulley, I'm temporarily fastening it with double-sided tape. And I was careful and I got it very close the first time and it looks really good now. This doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because the wheel can be trued afterwards. To permanently fasten the wheel to the pulley, I'm gonna be using wood screws driven through the face. And here I'm drilling holes in just deep enough to mark the location on the pulley. And then I'll take the wheel off and I'll pull off the double-sided tape and finish drilling the holes. To fasten the main upright to the base, there are screws that go in from beneath, but it's difficult to hold it exactly where it needs to go while I do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fasten it first with fast setting epoxy. And then after that sets, I can drill and dry the screws from the bottom. Next, I can work on the rear motor mount by first attaching the brace with glue and a single screw. And then I can clamp that in place and drive screws in from beneath. Then I can put the motor in place and clamp the divider to the main upright before once again driving screws in from the bottom. Next, I'm gonna drive a two and a half inch screw through the main upright and into the divider, making sure that the parts are lined up correctly. And here I'm doing something that I changed later in the build. Basically, I came up with a better way to stabilize the motor and keep it from turning than these two small blocks. Next, I can install the tracking knob bracket to the top of the main upright and then fasten the platen to the front edge of the divider panel with two pan head screws. Even though I was very careful positioning the lower wheel on the pulley, it's still just a very small amount off center. And to fix that, I've temporarily clamped a piece of plywood in place to act as a tool rest while I turn the wheel true. And then I can fasten the front panel to the divider with one screw and then two screws from underneath. 
I'm not using any glue on these joints because I may have to take this apart in the future for maintenance. Here I've made a couple of small rub plates from sheet metal and I'm using double-sided tape to stick those in place on the upper wheel bracket. Because the thickness of plywood varies, there are a couple of parts that need to be cut to length after I get this far in the assembly. And the first of those is the disc table. I need to trim about a sixteenth of an inch off. The other part that needs to be adjusted is the lower disc cover. And here I've made a bit of a mistake by drilling the holes too close to the edge that I need to trim. So what I did was I re-drilled those further in and I made that correction on my plans. To get started on putting together the upper table, I'm marking out the screw locations for the butt hinge, and then I can drill those out. Unfortunately, I didn't have screws that were the right length for this. So the tips came through the surface, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna file those down flush and then sand it smooth. Next, I can glue on the strup mounting block and take note that I'm making yet another mistake here. The bevel is supposed to be facing the other way. Then I can install the upper table with just screws again. And install the strut with a single pan head screw at the top and the locking knob at the bottom. Since the face of the lower wheel is also the surface for the sanding disc, I need to make sure that that's true as well and doesn't wobble. And to do that, once again, I've clamped a strip of plywood in place to use as a tool rest to turn it true. And then I can sand it smooth and check with a straight edge to make sure that it's actually flat. And this looks pretty good. Before mounting the upper wheel, I'm going to quickly sand off the glue squeeze out from around the edge. And then I can get the belt put on and start the machine for the first time. It seems to be working well, but the tracking can be improved by slightly crowning the upper wheel, and I'm using the sanding file again for that. I do have one other machining operation to do, and it's something I kind of forgot about, and that's mainly because it's not strictly needed. It's to drill the four holes in the upper wheel, and all this does is it makes the machine look just a little bit cooler, or at least I think so, anyway. I gave the polyurethane a couple of days to dry, and then I put on a sanding disc and reinstalled the lower table, and now the sander is ready to use. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and once again, if you're interested in building one of these for yourself, the plans are available on my website, and there's a link to that in the description.